Um, okay, let's get into it. So last draft class, mm -hmm. our listeners here probably heard me say this a million times. There's not a lot of blue chips in this class. There's not a lot of blue chips. You know, I felt good about Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, on the field at least. And then beyond that, it's like, I don't know. You know, even even the best quarterback, Bryce Young, it's like the dude's short. The dude's like 5'8". So right. is this draft class different? What are we looking for in this 2024 draft class high level from just a blue chip uh, standpoint yeah i'm not just saying this because i want people to read our work and use our mock draft simulator but like this is genuinely a loaded draft class at least it looks like it here in at the end of august going into september like this has the potential and i'll, I'll just say it like this i did a top 150 that we have over on pff.com right now so you guys can go see that if you would like there are players outside of my top 100 that would pretty easily be in top 75s in previous years. So, like, that's the kind of talent pool that we're talking about. It's just really great. And when you go to the blue chip conversation, yeah, it was, it was one that a lot of people wanted to know because the three blue chip prospects, I think, okay, Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, and then Bijan Robinson, I think that point of conversation when you talked about draft strategy was sometimes a reason why people were like, yeah, just take Bijan in the top 10. I get that he's a running back, but you only have one blue chip offensive player in this class. So go get that guy. So it, it kind of shaped the way that we talked about how the 2023 NFL draft is going to unfold. This year, it could be loaded with blue chip players. I mean, Caleb Williams, obviously at the top, you figure he's going to be a blue chip quarterback. Drake May is somebody who you think could uh, certainly get that blue chip tag as well. Maybe they go number one, and number two in the draft, but like, Marvin Harrison Jr. would be a, a, a number one wide receiver in the NFL today. So he's got the blue chip tag. The same with Brock Bowers. I mean, the second that Brock Bowers comes in the NFL, I think he's going to be one of the best tight ends in the league. And that's, I'm not saying this, I, I don't mean to say this lightly. I just mean to say how good the top talent is in this year's draft class. So he's going to be a blue chip. Jared Verse, the edge rusher from Florida State. Uh, Olu Fashanu from Penn State, the offensive tackle. He could be a blue chip. Joe Alt from uh, Notre Dame, their offensive tackle could very well be a blue chip. Chop Robinson, the edge rusher from Penn State. Uh, Cooper DeGene, the corner slash safety from Iowa like you've got corners like uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and uh, and Kalen King from Alabama and Penn State so like I'm naming off just off the top of my head and really at the very beginning of my big board guys who I don't just have ranked high could have those blue chip tabs to them and that that's more than double the amount that we could have even potentially had I think last year so this class is is it's extremely talented at the top um, but I also think that it's just really deep in a lot of the really important positions, quarterback, edge rusher, offensive tackle, wide receiver, um, cornerback. Th those groups already are showing multiple potential first rounders, which makes for a fun conversation to have throughout the season. Two, two of the specific names that you mentioned, Jared Verse from Florida State and then Olu Fashanu, the offensive tackle from Penn State. Both guys were draft eligible last year, could have declared, were expected to declare at one point and maybe would have been – uh, the top or second, you know, position uh, player off the board at their respective positions. I don't, I don't think Jared Verse would be going over Will Anderson, but certainly would have been right. in the top ten conversation. Maybe goes above Tyree Wilson at edge, and then Fashanu may have been the best tackle prospect in the draft last year if he had come out. But they're both young. They're inexperienced, right? Jared Verse has about 500 career FBS snaps, not even. Mm -hmm. And and Fashanu, you know, broke out last year, but again, inexperienced. Mike, what I'm wondering is, does the class feel loaded because of just the state of college football? Did we just hit this spot where certain players were coming back because of NIL? And I know NIL is not better money than first round money, but it might be enough if you're on the fringe, right? It's enough to keep you in college. Are we at this point where the class feels loaded because, of, because some guys came back because of NIL or because of inexperience, and then a bunch of these guys that we think are going to come out the soft, the redshirt sophomores, the juniors, maybe they end up staying an extra year. Is that part of the reason why it feels loaded? Yeah, I think that this genuinely could be a mega draft class for a couple of the reasons that you named and other reasons. I mean, going back to Olu and Jared Verse, I think Jared Verse would have been the pick at number seven for the Raiders, and I think that Olu Fashano would have been the pick for the Arizona Cardinals, whether they would have stuck at three or whether they would have made the trade back and trade up to number six. I think both of those guys would have been top ten picks last year, which, of course, helps bolster – a draft class when you look at those two guys and say oh they would have been top 10 players last year and 
I have Olu at number four, and I think I have Jared Verse at either seven or eight. Like, I got a lot of other guys around them and even ahead of them in this upcoming class. So I think that the context that you brought in to the question is important. NIL is allowing players who may have even gotten, like, early day two grades to say to themselves, you know what, I'm financially set with some of these deals that I have, and I want to go for that first round tag. I, you know, all, These guys only get drafted to the NFL one time. It'd be pretty damn cool at the end of your career, at the end of your life, whatever, to look back and be like, yeah, I was a first round draft pick at one point. So I think a lot of players have those aspirations, and with NIL, they're getting a lot more money up front, or at least out in the open, we should say. And so that is leading them to probably stay a little bit more and see if they can become those first round draft picks. So I definitely agree with you. That goes into it. I also think the COVID year, the free COVID year that these players have of eligibility goes into this as well, because there's some fourth and fifth year players from last year's class who have that fifth and even sometimes sixth year of eligibility if they got injured and got a medical red shirt in there somewhere that are now in this draft class so they're basically trying to put all their chips into this this season and say hey i've got a ton of experience now i'm going to get another year as a starter maybe that's going to be the difference of what takes me from an undrafted free agent to a day three guy maybe a day three guy to a day two guy i don't know how many fifth or sixth sixth year players we're going to talk about in the first round but i think all of those things go into this being a mega draft class when it comes to overall talent. So this is this to me is going to be one of the most exciting classes for those two reasons because we're seeing NIL really influence draft decisions for the first time and because we're coming towards the end of those guys having that extra COVID year of eligibility. I think it goes to many, many, many less players once you get beyond this year.